So, we um, continue our second lesson, uh, the place of um, Our Lady and her place in, in, in spiritual life. Second lesson, second part of the second lesson in the uh, course uh, introduction, initiation into spiritual life in the School of Men. Um, I would like to sum up what I said in a drawing, so a drawing, so you can remember, visualize uh, the the the, uh, the core of, of, of what we said. What is important for us to understand is that our faith is structured, object and subject. Faith is not what do you believe only. It's, are you capable of believing? How do you believe? So the subject of the faith is as important as the object of the faith. <coughs> this is why the parable of the sower and the language of the parable is important because it is focusing on this double aspect, double-sided aspect of our faith. You see? We believe, but who are we? Are we capable of believing? How do we believe? Then we believe in this, this, this and that. I believe in the Gospel. Oh, how do you believe in the Gospel? In which way? Well, it's the Word of God, yes, but how do you listen? To, how do you hear this Word? Do you hear it this way or that way? Who decides? You decide. Are you aware of that? That you can change? The Word of God is objectively in front of me, but I am a subject. So how does it fall in me? How does it enter in me? As we saw with our Lady and Zechariah, you know? The same word as Annunciation here happened, Annunciation there happened. But one entered and the other one didn't enter. Mm. Jesus said three times, I will die and rise. I will die and rise. And at the end of the day, it didn't enter in them. You see what I mean? Getting my point? So, the structure of our faith is double, two-sided, object and subject. And in order to sort of visualize it, I will use a very traditional image, which is the relationship between the sun and the moon. In the very old iconography, very early iconography, we have in the icons, you can see it sometimes when you enter in certain churches, you will see the sun and the moon. The sun symbolizes who? Jesus. Jesus, thank you. I will do it in red. I will do it here, I mean, I will do the sun in red. Okay? So, Jesus is the sun. Why is he the sun? Because he's everything. He is our everything. He is God, totally, perfectly God, and he is he has a human nature. This God took a human nature, and he is perfectly human as well. He can understand me. He's a, he's, a, he's, a hum, he's human, he has a human nature. He can understand me, I can relate to him, he can relate to me. He is God, he can save me, he can bring me back to God. So he is everything for me. I can find everything, anything I need, I can find it in him. Again, everything I need, I can find it in him. He has all the treasures, all the treasures are in him. I am not supposed to go outside of him and find something else. This is why St. Paul says, all the treasures of wisdom, of science, all the graces are enclosed in him. This is why we say he is our everything. Okay? Clear? This is why we use the, the, this, this image of the sun, which is the central figure, a central, um, central uh, ast uh, ast uh, uh, star in our system, 
and it's the center of center of our galaxy, the sun. He's giving the, the, his, the light and everything, and without the sun, there is no life on Earth. The form is round. It shows the infinity as well. This is a, a, a geometrical form. The circle alludes always to the infinite because it doesn't have a beginning, doesn't have an end. Like God didn't start at a certain point. God always existed. God doesn't have an end. So it's the circle form always was adopted by the philosophers as the perfect form to express infinite. Okay? So this is why we, we choose the sun for these all these reasons. There are certainly other reasons, but I'm just mentioning these ones. Then this sun is the object of our faith. This is the seed of the parable of the sower. Is there any womb? Is there any heart? Is there any earth that is capable of enclosing everything. The one who can enclose the, the one, this subject, who can enclose inside the one that not even the heavens can enclose. God cannot be enclosed in a place because God is bigger than any place. But there is a being who was capable of having him entirely in her. And this being here on this um, uh, drawing will be represented by the moon. <coughs> okay? And, as we said, this being the good earth, this person who was capable of saying yes, the new Eve, Madame Mary. she is the new Eve, mm -hmm. she, this is very important, she is the mother of all the children, the new children of God, and she is capable of containing the one that nobody can contain. All the angels cannot contain uh, Jesus, because Jesus is God. But we need to contain him, we need to be able to embrace him. Okay? So, the good earth is capable of believing in him, receiving him with the power of the Holy Spirit in her heart and in her body. Both. Not only in her body but as first and foremost in her heart. This is what St. Ambrosius and St. Augustine said. They, they say that she, by faith, her faith, she was capable of receiving in her heart, believing and receiving in her heart first and then in her womb. And this is very important. This is why when Jesus is praised because of his mother that she bore him, he says, no, you should look at her in a different way. You should consider in her the one who <coughs> listened to the word of God and put it into practice. You remember that thing? Mm. When they say, oh, blessed is your mother who mm. gave you, uh, who fed you, know, her milk, etc. He said, no, rather blessed the ones who listened to the word of God and put it into practice. Do you remember that bit? Mm -hmm. Is he saying, well, my mom is not important, as some people would conclude? On the contrary, he is saying... Look at her, but in a different way, in a deeper way. Instead of seeing just the person who, who, who enclosed me in her with her body, go further, look further, look inside, look deeper. She as well, mainly, first and foremost, listened to the word and put it into practice. This is how you should praise Our Lady, and this is how you should see her. This is how you should relate to her. This is why I said, it's not about devotion, it's not about emotions, it's not about affection. It's this, if you want, but much more. It is fundamental, because it's about the capacity of listening to the Word of God and putting it into practice. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It is still about Jesus, centrally about Jesus. I want to be able to listen to Jesus and put His Word into practice. This is why I need the capacity to do it. This is why this moon is fundamental. 
the quality of the relationship between the moon and the sun is fundamental. She believes in him, the eyes. You write eyes like this? Yes. 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 And then, she loves him, with the perfection of the good earth. This is why she's called the good earth. There are no the good earths. It's not a plural, it's a singular. So what is it? The core is to believe, to see, and to love. We need to see Jesus, we need to love Jesus. We need eyes and we need a heart. And as you remember, we have the first earth we have the second earth and then we have the third earth and there is a line between them and the good earth. So what happens is that we want to <coughs> we want to relate, we want to go with our bicycle to the moon. I want to go to Jesus directly. You are not going directly. You are using a bicycle. The bicycle of your means, of your capacity, of your faith. Do you understand the problem? People say, I don't want to go to, Je to Jesus. I don't want to go to Mary and then go to Jesus. It's too complicated. I want to go to Jesus immediately. I said, well, wake up. You are using a bicycle. I want you to go directly to Jesus. But what are you doing? You are taking a bicycle. I'm giving you the rocket. You are still using your own mean. And you, what is the first earth? Nothing. Didn't bring any fruits. What is the second earth? Nothing. Didn't bring fruits. The third. Same. There is a bit of growth, but no fruits. So what's the point of all that business? I want you to go directly to Jesus. This is why Mary is central. Because Mary offers the direct route to Jesus. She shows the way. Hodigitria. She is called in Greek. Ho di gi tri yeah. It's mentioned she's mentioned in the catechism. Ho di gitria means she she's the one who shows the way. Ho di gitria. She's showing the way. The way is Jesus. The center is Jesus. We are not seeking Mary, we are seeking the fullness of Jesus. Do you understand the point? We are concerned by the perfection of reaching Jesus. Am I using the best capacity to receive Jesus? This is why I say we draw our heart from her. We find our heart prepared in her. And my heart is here. There's a little green thing inside here. My heart is here. You see? My heart is here. It's inside. So I can with her eyes, with her heart, know and love Jesus. This is the rocket. You go faster this way. I'm not using her like I am here and I'm saying, please Mary, pray Jesus for me. Do you understand the difference? I'm not saying she intercedes in this way, which is I'm very distant from her and from him, and I am below and I'm saying, please Mary, tell him something. No, I am in her, discovering that I am already in her by the will of God or by the grace of God as a perfect subject. Then in her, I am seeing Jesus. Is this faster? Is this fuller or not? Do you understand that Mary is not an intermediate? Understood this way, she is not intermediate. She is me immediate. No mediation. Mary is the immediation. She is not the mediation. Because he is the mediator, he is the one of everything. But I want to relate to him directly. Do you, do you understand the difference? This is theology. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly between theology and spiritual theology. Which is, spiritual theology is the practice of, 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 of our faith. See what I mean? Okay? So let this thing remain in you. Don't take a bicycle to go to the sun. Take the perfect subject, 
take the heart, your heart, that is prepared, stored in her, just grab it, just use it. This is then what we are supposed to do on the practical side. How do we live as Christians? How do we relate to Jesus? How do we say, Jesus, I love you? In Mary, I'm loving you, Jesus. Not with my capacity, but with this capacity that you put in her. Baptisms, ba baptism gives us two things. The deep structure of theology is double, not single. It's not about just God, just Jesus, the Trinity, Jesus, the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. No. It's about the capacity to relate to God. This is our faith. It's double. I believe in God. It's not God. It's I believe in God. So do I believe really in Him? Do I have the capacity? You see? So what we need in our daily life, it's daily. It's not when I do this or that. It's daily, constantly. What do I need? I need to be here in order to be closer to Him. I'm not looking at her. Do you understand that? I am in her looking at Him. Do you understand the difference? People say, well, I don't want to look at our, our lady. I want to go to Jesus. I have a problem here. I want to look at Jesus. Well, please, do look at Jesus, but not with your bicycle, with your weak capacity. Look with a rocket, with a high speed, laser speed. I want you to be here, in her, in front of him. Do you see the difference? So this is what I need when I pray. I need to be in her, to receive my new being. I say, God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, give me the new heart. Give me the heart of flesh. Where do I find it? I know I, I'm, it's in her. Mary, Holy Spirit, make my heart like the heart of Mary. Because she's the perfect subject. She's the good earth. I want to be the good earth. We all want to be the good earth. And it is given. Hallelujah. Amen. We are happy. Why? Because we know there is a solution. But don't take any low-grade solution that doesn't reach, that doesn't bear fruit. First earth, parable of the sower, second earth, third earth. They don't bring, bear fruits. Do you understand the mechanism? This is the mechanism of our faith, of our spiritual life. Hmm? There is a, a story that you will, might find a bit, a bit childish, but it's extremely deep. Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. In French, Saint Therese. Saint Therese of Lisieux. Lisieux in France, the French one. You know, the little flower. The one with, uh, with the, always with the, the cross and uh, roses falling on her, etc. She used to say, I, uh, when I uh, am about to receive communion, the body and, and blood of Jesus in, in, in the Mass, I pray God, I pray the angels to clean up my heart. And then I pray Our Lady to come and sit in my heart. So when I receive him, he enters in her and he th when I receive him, he thinks he's entering in her, not in me. Of course you might say, well, what does it mean? He thinks it's her. Well, he knows that he's not her. Is it? No, 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 no. It's very deep what she's saying. She's giving us a secret, a very deep secret. Again, what does she say? She said to the angels to prepare her, uh, her heart and then Our Lady, so Our Lady can come and sit there. So when she received Jesus, Jesus has the impression to enter in Our Lady, not in Therese. Do you understand the trick? Do you understand the cleverness? How shrewd and wise is this girl, Therese? She got the point. She, she knows how to seduce him. She knows how to get him. She knows how to grab him. You got the point. She, she, she's sure she can get him. Because she has the key to enter. How wise is this virgin? How wise is this virgin? How stupid and foolish we are. Do you see the difference? She said in her heart, for people who would say that what she's saying is, is looks silly. She says, it's not silly, it's very deep. She said, in her heart, come, um, come, Mary, in my heart. Sit in my heart, be in my heart. Mary will never say no. A mom would say no. 
I mean, it would be the end of the world if the mom said no. Mary comes, she sits there, and she receives communion. Of course, Therese is receiving communion. But look at the cleverness of Therese. She got him. She said, he will come and he will have the impression that it's not, it's her, he's entering in her. She doesn't use the word impression, huh? Um, No, she doesn't, she, I, I don't have the, the, I thought I have the, that text, exact text, no, she's, she's saying the same thing, but it's, it's not the exact thing. I will, I will find it for you. So, Mary prepares her, but in fact, she wants him to be pleased. She wants him to find fullness of the subject, being received properly. The hostess. The host and the hostess. We need a proper hostess. A person who is capable of receiving the Lord. Not according to her capacity, not according to her limited views. And this is given. The perfect subject is given to us. You see what I mean? I need to understand that I can't, but I can. I can't if I'm trying this way, and I can if I'm trying that way. I can't if I want to believe in the resurrection by myself. But I can believe in the resurrection in her because she did it for me. So I have to draw from him. You know to draw, when you go to a well, you draw from the well. To draw from. So I'm drawing from the capacity, her the capacity to believe in his resurrection, to grasp, to be grasped by his resurrection. See what I mean? So, what we call devotion now should be rooted in this understanding and when you read, for instance, uh, uh, Saint Louis-Marie de, de Montfort, uh, True Devotion to Mary, uh, this book, this is, this book, in this book, this saint, Saint Louis-Marie Grignon de Montfort, explains with his own words, I'm using these examples, he uses other examples, in order to <clears throat> explain the relationship between Mary and Jesus and what we are supposed to do. Of course, the, word, the, the book is called the true devotion to Mary, the word devotion is there, but you understand that this devotion is rooted on a very deep understanding. So, devotion means attachment to Mary. How am I attached to Mary? What is my relationship to Mary? This is, this is fundamental. We cannot live our life on earth without asking ourselves this question. What is my relationship with Mary? Why Mary in my life? Do I need her? Then, I understand the real meaning of devotion as he, as he, as he is trying to convey. He knows there are false devotions. He knows there are superficial devotions. He knows that there are devotions that are not rooted in faith. This is why he calls it true devotion. Or vrai in French, no? La vraie devotion. The true devotion. Okay? So I need to purify my devotion, to elevate my devotion, to root my devotion in the Bible. Did we ever leave the Bible today? Did we ever leave the Gospel today? Not a minute. Not a minute. And people dare to say that Our Lady is not in the Gospel. Well, she, she is the Gospel. Where God wrote His Son in her. This is how she is described by the, the Byzantine uh, hymn of Akathist. She is described as what? As this white paper where God wrote His Gospel. Wow! Amazing! You see? So she is the, the core of the Gospel, to a degree. But do we see her in the Gospel? Did we reach this depth in order to see her in the Gospel? You see? And she's there. I, I just thought of things we all know. I mentioned Resurrection. I mentioned Cana of Galilee. I mentioned the Annunciation. I mentioned a little bit the Visitation, uh, running a little bit. Um, all generation will call me what? 
Blessed. blessed. Why all generation will call me blessed? Just for the pleasure because I am the mother of Jesus? No. Because of this. Because she is the blessed, we are not the blessed. So we need to be blessed. Simple. Why all generation will call me blessed? Because she's capable of him. Capable of him. Of embracing him. This is why she is blessed. She believed. I didn't believe. Zechariah didn't believe. Elizabeth didn't believe. I didn't believe. But I can believe. You see? So we have to jump the abyss between our incapacity to believe in the resurrection and nothing bad in that. We shouldn't be sad. We should rejoice that we are incapable of, that our bicycle cannot reach the moon. Are you sad because your bicycle cannot reach the moon? You have a bicycle? Say yes. Yes. Okay. You bought a bicycle. Hmm? Your bicycle cannot reach the moon. Are you sad? No, a bicycle is a bicycle. It's not a rocket. So don't go to God with a bicycle. Your own capacity. And say, I'm going directly. You're not going directly. You are using your own mean, your own little understanding, your own vision, your own perception, your own reception of the Holy Spirit. What is my reception of the Holy Spirit? My capacity to receive the Holy Spirit? It's crumbs that fall from, from, the, from the table. We need the whole meal. Not crumbs. We need the whole meal. You got me? When I say the Hail Mary, what happens? Because now we are trying to go more into practical things. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. So I am saluting this reality. So I say Hail Mary. Full of grace. Yes. Which means what? You are in all your being filled by the Holy Spirit. There is no space in you that is not filled by the Holy Spirit. There is no way that you can do something out of the grasp, the control of the Holy Spirit. Got me? Full of grace. Full of grace means capable. Yet, Jesus is not there when the angel is, is saluting her. But, you are capable of receiving him. Because, you are pure. You don't know it. You know it. It's not a problem. But you are pure. You are capable. You're not only pure. She's not only pure. She's not only immaculate. Immaculate is not enough. She's immaculate full of grace. It means it's not only pure. Purity is not enough. She's filled with the Holy Spirit. So she's in motion. Holy Spirit is fire. God is fire. God is not static. Ah, oh, it's pure. It's clean. I cleaned it perfectly. No? No! It's fire. It's fire. Fire. So there is no space in her where there is no fire. Can you bear that fire? And then she can receive Jesus. So Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord Jesus, God, the triune God, the Father, the, Holy, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord is with you. And then, blessed are thou among women. Women here should be understood as earth, not as women like females. Male, female. It should be understood as the subjects. Amongst all the subjects, amongst all the earths, you are the earth. Got me? It's not, blessed you about my women. It's like men cannot conceive Jesus. No, man can conceive Jesus. By faith, you conceive. You don't conceive in your body, but you conceive in your heart. And this is the essential part. We need to conceive. What? St. Paul says, the new being in you has to grow. Jesus in you has to grow. So you are conceiving. You are a Christ bearer. You are bearing Christ. You are bringing Christ. Okay? So amongst all earth, not amongst women, amongst all earth, amongst all the subjects, the capacity to bear, the capacity to relate to the seed, the divine seed, you are blessed. Because Zachariah wasn't able Elizabeth wasn't able, you and me, John, Peter, Magdalene, weren't able to believe in the resurrection, in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. She was capable. In the third day, there was a wedding. Here is the wedding. This is so intense when you look at this. This is so full of light. You can fall if you look at it. You can fall. You can't bear the light. It's so intense, the mystery of this relationship between him and her. Can we enter this mystery between him and her? 
So hey, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. You bear fruit. The others cannot bear fruit. Got the point? Got the point? We cannot bear fruit. We have to be in her to bear fruit. Got the point? And then? Uh, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, from Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary. Again, Holy Mary. Mother of God. God here is whom? Jesus. Jesus. It's not God the Father or the, Son or the Spirit. It's God the Son who is incarnate because she is the mother. She, is, she brought him into, in earth. Mother of God. Holy Mary. Mother of God. Pray for us sinners. Now stop here. Pray for us means what? Full concentration because this is the key of the Hail Mary. This is the, the, the engine. When you light the engine, you start your car. The Hail Mary has a moment where you start the car. It lights. You put the fire. Pray for us means what? Lift me from where I am to where you are. Pray for me means what? Elevate. Lift me. This is why pray for me is essential. Pray for me is not like, I am here and you are there, pray for me, I can't access neither you nor him. This is not pray for me. This is why we need to understand properly what it means, that what Mary is doing. She's not praying for, for us like we are miles down and she's miles uh, 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 um, high, uh, high up and she's relating to him and we don't know, we don't see and we will remain in the darkness. No, my dear. Pray for me means bring me. Not by your own capacity, by the action of the Holy Spirit in you. Again, she's not immaculate only. She is full of grace. You understand the point? Being pure is not enough. She is on fire. When you look at Mary, remember, she is fire from the fire. Hmm? Like the uh, Moses, Moses bush, no? It is one of the images of Our Lady in the, the, the tradition, the mystical, the, the liturgical tradition. Mary is called the burning bush of Moses. Means she is burning. So what do I say? Prayer for us means what? It's the action of the Holy Spirit in her. The Holy Spirit in her is free. This is why we say full of grace. It means he doesn't have obstacles in her. This is why she's immaculate conception. This is why she's the first born. New Eve coming from the side of new Adam. She's pure. She's born of his bones. She is flesh of his flesh. Then she can be called woman. Isha coming from him. The new name of, of our lady is Isha. Is, is woman. Okay? So prayer for us means what? With the power, the lifting power of the Holy Spirit. Lift us. Put us in you. In front of him. This is why, where I want to be. This is where Jesus can be in me. By being here at this level. So pray for us sinners now and for our death. Amen. Got the point. Got the meaning of the Hail Mary. The theology behind the Hail Mary. So it's not just uh, three old women sitting in a, in, a, in a dark, left abandoned church saying the rosary. Do you understand the point? It's much deeper than that. They know it somewhere. This is why they are gathered in this church and saying the rosary. Somewhere they know it. But here we understand it better because I'm explaining the theology. Okay? Got the point? Understanding better? Where is Mary? Where I am? Okay, how long did we... If you have questions, start to prepare them. So, um, you understand the power of one Hail Mary. How the Hail Mary is full of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. How the Hail Mary is full of the fruit of the redemption. The first fruit of the redemption is her being. So I'm not praising somebody out of Jesus. I'm praising the flesh of the flesh and the bone of the bone of Jesus. When he gives his body, what does he say? Take this and eat from it. This is my body that will be given for you. Take this and drink from it. He is giving his body and his flesh. What's wrong? He is giving you Isha, 
He wants you to be Isha in front of him. He wants you to be the woman, the new creature, the perfect subject. He is giving you his body and blood. And she is his flesh and his bone. Did you get the similarity, the mystical similarity? The mystical almost, 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 identity, almost. So understand the steps. This noise is coming from you? No. No. Okay. No, because it's a machine. Okay? Clear? Yes. So, you understand the power of one Hail Mary, how the Hail Mary is full of the salvation, the, act, the action of, of Jesus on the cross and the fruits of that action. So you understand that when you have a problem during the day, just stop and say inside of you, one, one, not ten, one Hail Mary, and see yourself the difference. And drop us a message, as they would say today, or tweet us, or like. <laughs> Try one Hail Mary in the middle of your struggle during the day. Stop inside, you are at work, you have a problem with your colleague, there are big fights. Just stop and say inside of you, don't show that you are praying, just do it. Say one Hail Mary. One, say it. Show, you are showing your goodwill. See the result and come back to us and tell us. This is Saint Therese again. She used to do that. When you have a problem at work, in the family, anywhere. Just stop, say one Hail Mary, and see the result. Do you understand that it's not, uh, uh, how do they call it, like magic, no? It's not a magic thing, it's not a superstitious thing at all. If you are just asking the intervention of the Holy Spirit, the powerful intervention, because in her, she is his fruit, she is the perfect subject, in her, the Holy Spirit is absolutely free. So you are just asking for this freedom of the action of God. You want to be in her. You don't want to be a slave. You want to be free. You don't want to be incapable of doing things. You want to be capable of doing things. You don't want to be the son of the darkness. You want to be the son of the light. You want to be in the light. The light being Jesus. Okay? Clear? So stop and say one Hail Mary. This is the way. When you receive communion, you may, if you want, do like Therese. So please do ask for this intercession. It's a, it's a human word, intercession. But the reality, I hope you are grasping better how fire of God lifts. And it's the fire of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what? Is it the Spirit of Mary? No, it's the Spirit of God. And Jesus is God. So you understand that we cannot separate them. And this is the, the, the strange thing, that people can speak about Our Lady without speaking about Jesus, which is absurd. You cannot part them. It's impossible to part them, to separate them. She's full of Him, she's embracing Him. If you want to find Him in fullness, you will find Him in her. Because this is the right Jesus, not the wrong Jesus. If you want to find the right Jesus, you will find him embraced by her. This is the right Jesus. This is why Mary is called the victorious over all the heresies. Heresy means coming out of the right faith, the right understanding, the right living as well of the faith. And she is victorious of all heresies. She wins against any wrong interpretation of the faith. Why? Because she is the interpretation. And there is no interpretation. Just enter in her and you find him. Do you see what I mean? Why we, we, this is an old saying. <clears throat> I think I have to stop here. There are plenty of things. We might come back to them next time. Uh, uh, trying to do the, the uh, starting the, the next step, which is the, uh, the third lesson. Uh, the third lesson will be about the uh, dogmatical roots. Like here, I explained dogma, which is the understanding of, of, of things. Dogmatical roots of prayer. How, what is the relationship? We believe in the, the Trinity. We believe in God the Creator. We believe in God the Savior. We believe in the Fall before, first. And then we, we, we believe in the Savior. We believe as well that after the Savior, the Savior gave us the Holy Spirit and then life starts. Our super, supernatural life, our spiritual life starts uh, from that point. 
So we will see when I pray where I am in the Trinity. Where I'm, when I pray, where where I am when when Adam fell. Uh, where I pr when I pray, where where I am with, with Jesus. What did Jesus do do to me? Where is my place in Jesus when I pray? No, the whole, the real temple is is Jesus. We will see all that in the third uh, lesson, and then we will continue continue our journey. So do you have, do you have any questions? <clears throat> no. Yeah, okay. Nice. I will. I will. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. I would like to conclude this um, second lesson with one beautiful thing that happens at the cross. And sometimes you wonder. People say the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, but no to Mary. Well, it's very clearly stated in the Bible when Jesus is dying. What happens in the Gospel of St. John? So he turns to Our Lady and he says, um, Woman, well, this is your son, and son, this is your mother, to St. John. Yeah. So the soldiers, John 19, 25, and the following. So the soldiers, John 19, 25, and the following verses. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, again, doesn't name her in another way. In another way. He names her woman, Isha. I am Isha or Isha. I know you, you know me. And I invite you guys to enter. She has the new wine. You guys don't have it. When she speaks to Jesus in Cana of Galilee, what, they, what she says? They don't have wine. Because she has wine. Otherwise she would say, we don't have wine. She said, they don't have wine. Because I have it. I am with you. Again, he names her. Woman, behold your, your son. Behold your son. Here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, the disciple, Behold your mother. mother. Would you like to be the disciple? Yes. Yes. Behold yes. your mother. The Bible. And from that hour, please, from that hour, from today, from this lesson, from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. So please, let us humbly take Mary in our home and never, never leave her hand. Never, ever leave her hand. This is an act. You can do it now, while we are concluding. As a beautiful act, conclusion, understood, I went through the light, understand, I understand my weakness, I understand my incapacity, I understand that I need Mary. God, help me. I receive Mary and I will take her with me at home. And never leave her. So it's not only about John, it's about you and me. Why would John tell us the story? Just because uh, uh, he took her and that's it, what's the point? There is no teaching there. If it was just a historical fact. It's a, histori it's a historical fact of universal implications. Because Mary is everywhere. Pope John Paul II, in his le in sec encyclical letter on Our Lady, says, speaks about her presence. Her presence amongst us. She is present. Take her at home. She will be all the time with you. This is the gift of God. This is the gift of baptism. When we are baptized, we receive both. Jesus and Isha, the woman, the capacity to love Jesus, to know Jesus and to love Jesus. Baptism has a double side, double aspect, like one fruit split in two. One is Jesus, the other is the flesh of Jesus, the bone of Jesus. Still Jesus, flesh and bone of Jesus. So you can become his flesh, so you can become his bone. You understand? You are the body of Jesus, says St. Paul, no? You are the body of Jesus, the mystical body of Jesus. Well, sorry. It's clear. How can you be the body of Jesus? You are the body of Jesus at the image of the woman. Because we are all invited to be women in this case. 
So it's not men and women, it's capacity, it's earth. It's a, yes, it's a feminine side. If you do not develop your feminine side this way, like you do not allow Mary in your life, me as a man, I'm not worth anything. I'm a stupid man. If I do not allow space in me for Mary, so then I can love Jesus, I'm worth zero. I'm not a Christian. I didn't start to become Christian. Get my point. Okay? So, then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her in his, to his own home. Wow. Why is Pope John Paul II speaks about the presence of Mary? She's present. It's not, she appeared there, she appeared here. My dear, she's at home with you. Do you realize this gift? This is baptism. This is baptism. We need to understand baptism. The gift that is given to us. He's not giving me the seed only, he's giving me the new earth. The new earth is you is given to you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. No, don't look, not look to our faith. Not, not look to our sins, but at the faith of your church. We say it in the Mass, no? Don't look at our, faith, our sins, but at the faith of your church. Don't look at our sins, but at the faith of our church. Faith of our church is the faith of Mary. The church doesn't have any other faith. Because Peter and John didn't have faith. They drew it from her. You understand the point? This is why John Paul II insisted and saying it and putting even in the catechism for the clever people to see it. He says, the Marian from Mary, the Marian profile of the church comes before the Petrinian profile of the church. Petrinian from Peter. So before speaking about the Pope, before speaking about the bishops, before, blah, 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 before speaking about John, Peter and everybody, you have to speak about her. The Marian profile of the church comes before the Petrinian, Petrinian from Petrus, from Peter, profile of the church. You know, understand now what it means? It's like John and Peter, they tried, couldn't, but Mary was able, and they went and drew from her. This is why he's not stupid. He put it. He said, from that hour, I am John. I wasn't capable of believing in his resurrection. I am John. I took her. So please, you want to be a disciple? Take her. This is the most precious thing. And this is part of the gift of God. It's not extra. It's not optional. Got my point? Are you with me? It's not optional. Mary is not optional. Without Mary, I sink. Not I think. I sink. You get my point? So, these two hours should be revised and followed and seen millions of times, every day. John Paul II used to read this book every day, two pages, one or two pages of it. He used to say his secretary. Why? Because it's not about devotion, it's about true, truth, true devotion, truth. So where is the truth? Where do I find Jesus in the fullness? I want the fullness of Jesus. Do I know the fullness of Jesus? I want to find you, Jesus. I'm not sure that if I found you yet enough, or fullness, or as you wish. Am I capable of seducing Jesus? Why things are not changing? Why the Holy Spirit doesn't come more often? We forgot the key. The fire, she's on fire. Why we do not, we don't have recourse to that fire? When you say pray for us, you are just having recourse to the fire of Mary. She's a flame. She's an alive, flame, fire. Why we do not recourse to that? And she's all made by him. We are honoring him in the end. We want him in the end. We don't. Her, her joy is to show us Jesus, right? her joy is to lead us to him. While we have a bicycle, she offers a rocket. Do you get the point? She doesn't want us for us. Mary never takes us one second for herself. Again, Mary never takes us in her, like for her, not she, we are in her, but not for her. She draws us immediately. Why? Because the fire 
takes toward Jesus. The Holy Spirit toward Jesus. So if you cannot stay and do nothing in her, you are immediately drawn to Jesus. You understand the point? Mary is not some, a, 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 a being for herself. She's just reflecting Jesus. So the fire goes immediately to Jesus. So if you want to go to Jesus like, like that, just being her, you will, be, you will be thrown in him. So let us say thank you to, to God for all this. There are, of course, many, many other things. So I invite you to deepen your understanding of the Bible, deepen your reading of the Bible as, as we tried uh, today. Go back to the parables, go back to the, these various texts and meditate and ponder uh, on, on these texts. And let us, together with all our hearts, say thank you to God for all these gifts. Thank you to God for this long, long, long tradition, thread, golden thread throughout 20 centuries of understanding. From John to us, from Matthew to us, from Luke to us, this thread of understanding, this, this, this um, aspect of our faith, the earth. We need to believe, we need to be able to believe in the resurrection of the Lord. So thank you, God. Humbly, we cannot, but you can, and you give us the means. You give us the Holy Spirit that dwells uh, in Mary. You give us the eyes and the heart of Mary. You put them in her. They are your bones. She is your bones. She is your flesh. So it's only you that we find in her. We don't find anything else than you in her. And we want you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. It lead us not into temptation. Better you get that from people. Thank you. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too.